jawbone.tv. Okay, starting video two. Once I have all the elements laid out in Photoshop and they're all nicely rendered and look how I want them to look in final story, I have to then export the individual elements uh, into Illustrator where I lay out the entire story. So to do that, um, I'll turn off all the layers that I don't want in the image. Um, for example, the first image is the background image. I'd export that. Um, then I'd export it as it uh, as the uh, sleeper reel, so with the glow on it. And then I might uh, export the trains, export those as an individual image. Then I'd export the uh, buildings, and then I'd export the sleepers. So once I have all those exported, I start importing them all into Illustrator. So I'll just jump to Illustrator now. Okay, so when I'm laying out the story in Illustrator, I use a similar process to um, Photoshop. I'll just move to the left here where the story begins. Um, so this is section one of the story, just uh, chilling out under the bridge with Harley and Johnny John. Uh, section one has its own layer, just here. And then as the story progresses along, um, I put the next section, section two, in its own layer, uh, which is here. And there's a lot going on in section two, lots of little rollovers and things. Uh, like in Photoshop, uh, Photoshop has folders for their layers and you can keep all your layers grouped into a folder. Illustrator has a similar sort of function. You click on this little arrow here and it drops down and shows you more hidden layers. So uh, this is uh, good for me for uh, sort of showing the progress of the storytelling. So um, the first thing is uh, when Johnny John first arrives at the bit ending machine, it's fairly dead. Then it comes to life, the little dudes pop out the sides and whatever. And then uh, he begins his transaction. And once the transaction's gone through, he jumps to the uh, next frame where the vending machine comes out and he's not happy with it and kicks the machine. Um, I keep my text on a separate layer again. Uh, the reason for this is because I um, export the text separately into Flash um, so that I can update it on the fly if things need to be written differently or whatever, but I'll show you that later. But um, I'll just keep moving along. And section there, section 4 there. Again, you can see uh, if I turn the visibility on and off for the section 4 layer. It appears, disappears, and uh, the same with the text. Um, if I turn section 4 off, the text is still there, vice versa. Uh, keep moving along, and here's section 5. So this is the um, the image that I was just working with in Photoshop, and uh, now in Illustrator. And so if I go and click on the little arrow for the section 5 layer and drop that down, we can see uh, all the different states on uh, their own little independent layers. And um, uh, the new uh, layers that are not in the Photoshop, uh, like these graphic design elements, uh, which I just kind of use to um, pull the story together so it's not a big chaotic mess. So I can turn those on and off. Um, if I go into B, we have all um, the individual elements brought in as transpa transparent uh, PNG graphics. Yeah, there's the trains layer, the sleeper layer. I call this the solar, solar glow, or the fog and I'll export that into Flash as an individual graphic as well. 
So the next step of of it is to uh, now that this is all the right size and laid out uh, as the story, it's almost the final stage. It's the static stage, and the next step is to take all these graphical elements into uh, into Flash. Uh, to do that, I'll just use one example. Um, maybe the trains. So we've got the trains visible here. I'll turn off all the other layers. So we've only got the trains visible. And the big background image as well. So it's just the trains at the right size with nothing in the background. And the easiest way to get them out of Illustrator is just use this crop area tool to the exact size of the trains. This is a new function that just came out in um, an Illustrator CS3 perhaps. This little crop tool is very handy. And from there it just takes whatever's uh, inside this little cropped area and then when you go up to File um, say for web, only that area, that cropped area, will come up in the uh, say for web window. I'll just make this window a little bit smaller. Um, the next step for me is to make it into a PNG so you have a transparent background so that when I then uh, put all the elements together in Flash there won't be any white in the background and it will sort of fit seamlessly over the top of the background image and all the other stuff that's going on. Okay, so I'll stop the video there and I'll resume from phase 3 flash.